Wake up, you. Brother L is coming at you right again, one more time. And today, we're going to talk about, and I'm going to ask the question, did God say an eye for an eye? That's something that we ought to think about. And let, me, let me repeat that. Did God say an eye for an eye and a two for a tooth? Young people, what's important when we study the word of God, we have to make sure that we keep everything in context. And young people, what I mean by that is, we have to know who God was speaking to and why he was speaking to and when he was speaking to him. And when we begin to look at this whole, this phrase that come and a lot of people use an eye for an eye, two for a two, they like to take that passage of scripture and they want to apply it to whatever situation that they want to apply to if they are seeking some type of revenge. It's just like if we look at today, we see all the stuff that's going on. We see the, the police violence that uh, against uh, particularly African-American uh, people. And one can take that position, uh, take that passage of scripture and say, OK, since this police officer did this to this to this guy, this unarmed guy, or since this police officer choked this uh, unarmed man to death, or since this police officer put his knee in George Floyd's neck and just stayed there until he couldn't breathe anymore. Uh, some people like to take that, ver that verse and, and, and say, okay, this is what should happen to, to, to the police officer. We have to be very careful with that because even though God mentioned that and said that to the children of Israel back in Exodus uh, chapter uh, 21 around verse 24, he was talking to them and they were under the law. And the law was very straightforward. The law, they had all these commandments that they had to keep. And God had get, given, gave them a, a means to be able to discipline people who break those laws. But today, as the church, we're under grace. And Jesus, he does not contradict um, his father with those commandments um, in, in the Old Testament. But watch what Jesus said. He said something very important. And we look at this Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. And as we, we look at this chapter 5, Jesus, he began to speak, and he's speaking to his disciples, and we call this the Sermon on the Mount. And he, in chapters 5, 6, and 7, um, and he begins to speak to them. And in this fifth chapter, the 38th verse, Jesus says, Ye, ye have heard, so ye meaning y'all, we say y'all in Texas, have heard that it have been said, an eye for an eye and a two for a two. This is what was given, like I said earlier, to, to the children of Israel through the hands of Moses. This is the instructions that Moses um, gave them. But Jesus says, you, ye have heard that it have been said. So it have been said. An eye for an eye and a two for a tooth. Now watch this. In verse 39, Jesus, he continues, he says, but I say unto you that ye resist not evil. So Jesus said, well, wait a minute. Now, now, some things didn't change, and, and now that I'm here, I'm on the scene, uh, this, and I'm going to show you how you can live in a powerful and a, an effective and spiritual life. Um, and he began to give them uh, instructions on how they are to live righteously, because the issue was, because man, because we have a fallen nature, because we sin, because even if we, on our best day, we seem not to be able to do right. It's always some abuse of power. Just like we see the abuse of power that's, that's, that, that happens, not by every police officer, but some of the few officers out there and they abuse their power. This is what was going on back in, with the children of Israel. What if someone falsely accused you of stealing or, or murdering, murdering and all these things? Or it went to trial and the evidence was slanted and so... Uh, the, the criminal justice system didn't work out for you, and then they put you to death. And so Jesus, knowing the wickedness and the sinfulness um, of man, Jesus came along and said, well, now, here's a more righteous way of, of handling this. And he gave this because of the hardness of man's hearts. And so he says, he reads, he says, but I say unto you that if ye resist not evil. So the King James read kind of funny. But he says, instead of going with an eye for an eye and a two for a tooth, 
This is what I say unto you. Don't resist that evil or evil person. But whoever, whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the, the other also. Then it says, and if any man will sue thee at the law and, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. So Jesus has given them a standard on how they are to govern themselves. And, and Jesus, he makes it clear um, in these verses. He makes it clear that you ought to turn the other cheek. Now, Martin Luther King Jr., this is what his protest, the civil rights movement, was all about, the basis of it. Fighting for the rights of not only African Americans, but rights of women and, and so forth. But he had a non-violent non approach to this. Um, that has not always taken place. But a lot of people rejected Dr. Martin Luther King just because he had, uh, he was all about nonviolence. And this is, I believe, Dr. King being a Baptist preacher. I believe that Dr. King being the son of the living God, the Lord put and placed it on his heart for him um, to be able to, to have a movement that was nonviolent. And so to answer your question, did God say an eye for an eye? Yes, he did. But does it apply today during this time? No, because Jesus clears it up and says a more righteous thing to do. And it was based on because of the hardness of our heart, hearts uh, was to not to resist the evil person, but to turn the other cheek. Amen.